In the last video we looked at some fundamental physical concepts such as forces, fields, work and potential energy and how we can apply these to one of the most well-known natural phenomena, gravity. In this video we will be applying similar concepts to the forces which act on electric charges. Just as in the gravitational case, these may also be represented using electric fields. All you need to know about charges at this stage is that opposite charges attract and like ones repel. The magnitude of the force that acts between electric charges may be worked out by means of a formula which is similar to the one that we use for gravity. This force is proportional to the value of both charges and a constant value k and inversely proportional to the square of the distance. The difference is, however, that, unlike gravity, in this case, the force is not just attractive but can also be repulsive, so it may act to bring charges together or pull them apart. Let's look at the specific case when we have a big bunch of fixed negative charges, indicated by minus 2 in the diagram, which are somewhat stuck together, and a much smaller positive charge, plus qt, which is placed in the space surrounding this negative bunch. There will be an attractive force which will act to bring the positive charge towards the negative bunch, and we can use the formula to work out the magnitude of this force. However, we can also do exactly what we did for the gravitational case and look at the force that acts on the positive charge at different points in the space surrounding the negative bunch. So again, we are placing the positive charge at different points in the space surrounding the negative charge and we are again using vectors to indicate the magnitude and direction of the force at the various points acting on our positive test charge. However, just as in the gravitational case, we are somewhat locked in terms of the value of the force to the value of the positive test charge that we used. So we can define a new vector which will have the same direction as the force acting on the positive test charge, but a magnitude equal to the magnitude of the force divided by the value of the test charge. We define this new entity as the electric field E. Now the magnitude of the force acting on QT is simply QT times E, where E is the magnitude of the electric field, and more importantly, we can define the force acting on any charge Qx as Qx times E. It is important to note that the electric field vector has the same direction as the force acting on a positive charge. So if it is a positive charge that we are trying to work out the force on, then this force will be exactly in the same direction as the electric field. However, if we are looking at a negative charge, then we will have to reverse the direction of the force. And this will come from the fact that the charge will have a minus sign, indicating an opposite direction to the force that would act on a positive charge. The pictorial representation of the electric field will look very much like the force map that we had, but there was a force map, you must remember, which was worked out using a positive test charge. So now we move on to looking at potential energy in the case of an electric field. This diagram looks remarkably similar to the gravitational case. We replaced the Earth with this big bunch of negative charges, and then we replaced our apple with a small positive charge QT. In this case, when it comes to potential energy, we have a very similar situation to the gravitational field. There is an electric field which will act to bring positive and negative charges together and we will have to do negative work, i.e. work against the field, to take them apart. So suppose that we have a positive charge at position 1 where it will already have some potential energy because it is already at some distance from the negative charges and we indicate this potential energy with PE1. Then we do some work to take it further apart from the negative bound of charges and by doing so we've given it yet more potential energy to take it to position 2. So now there is a difference in the potential energy of position 2 and the potential energy of the position 1 where PE2 is greater than PE1 and we are indicating this with delta PE. However, in electric circuits, instead of talking about potential energy, we talk about potential energy per unit charge, and we call it something else. We call it voltage, or potential, or electric potential, and this is indicated by the letter V, and is measured in volts. So we've replaced in the diagram PE1 with V1, and PE2 with V2. So how can we use these physical properties to our advantage? Well, what we can do is separate positive and negative charges much in the same way as we took some of the water away from the pond and up into the reservoir. This will give our positive charges some potential energy, which we can indicate with delta V. 
Note that the color of the charges here is not chosen at random. The darker the charges, the more potential energy they have. So the light pink charges will have no potential energy at all, and the dark red charges will have the highest potential energy. So once we've given the positive charges the potential to do something, and that would normally be to come back down to the negative charges, we let them do just that, but we give them a different path to achieve at that particular journey. And this will be useful to us, because that path will be an electric circuit, and the electric circuit will be set up in such a way as to carry out some useful function for us. So you can see that as we flow through the circuit, the charges lose their potential energy as they went through some elements called resistors, which we'll talk about later on. And then, of course, once they've got back to the negative charges, they've lost their potential energy entirely. So again, this is very much the same as we had in the previous example with the gravitational field, where we used one path to take the water up to the reservoir and give it potential energy, and then a different path to let it flow back down to the houses and lose its potential energy to supply water to the various households. In the next video, we will be talking about electric current.